Hi there, Steve King with you once again. What I'm going to talk about now is what I've called the Teo of Tapas. I had wondered about the significance of Tapas Fleming's name, and you may remember she is the originator of Tapas acupressure technique, which I have uh, already mentioned during the course of this video series. And it was only recently, upon actually reading Rudolf, uh, Dr. Rudolf Ballantyne's book called Radical Healing, that I found an explanation as to the meaning of the name Tapas, or the word Tapas. It turns out to be one that truly fits with the concept of acknowledgement, but without letting an urge move one into the addictive action step. Tapas involves arousing play and energy invested impulse, and then electing not to express it in routine or habitual fashion. Tapas is not suppression or denial, which are actually ways to avoid experiencing the urgency of the impulse. You experience it fully and powerfully, and yet, despite the discomfort of its urgency, you choose not to act on it. You pass. You simply decline to be moved by it. You actually intentionally contain and accept the discomfort of the building energy or impulse and wait for it to find a new course. It sounds to me like it's an internal version of Gandhi's passive resistance strategy. You refuse to be moved and the immense power that is actually mobilized around that refusal tends to get transmuted. At some point the energy you're choosing not to express finds another route. And what typically happens is that you feel actually a sudden heat. Now the word tapas carries the connotation of burning and it is perhaps from the use of this technique that we get the idea of burning off karma. The energy isn't denied here or the action it's trying to push. You've just made a conscious decision to deactivate a particular habit. As a result of doing that, your actions will enjoy, in fact, a freshness and genuine spontaneity that makes each moment surprising for you. Without this, what passes for spontaneity is actually therefore only a counterfeit. It's not the adventurous creativity that is actually the essence of life, but is instead the dull routine of ingrained habit carrying you toward ennui and actually loss of vitality. Although even your most genuinely spontaneous response is to some degree a reflection of your unresolved issues, what is creative about it is the way it contributes to living through the experiences needed to move past those issues. Without employing some version of tapas, you actually remain prey to habits you wish you could change because they actually carry you nowhere. Without some radical measure, those habitual patterns, which are in fact, uh, uh, as we've mentioned before, rooted in the unconscious, are continually reinforced by the actions they prompt, so that the lion's share of your energy is tied up in a circular chain of action, reaction, frustration, and inevitably resentment. So, Breaking out of this requires only a bit of skillful attention. Dr. Ballantyne also mentions an example of how a form of tapas was helpful to his son who had actually come down with a quite severe case of chickenpox. Now I've used this story in a metaphorical form and it's actually been very helpful in assisting clients to understand the process and why it is a a healing move to acknowledge and work through something rather than to avoid, to deny or stay in negative habitual limbo. Knowing as we do, and th this is the metaphor, knowing as we do that scratching the chickenpox uh, postules on the face will be scarring, one is therefore faced with a choice. You can either scratch and get some instant gratification for the itchiness with a guarantee of lifelong scarring, or you could sit with it for 10 to 12 days 
without any scratching and have the delayed gratification of coming out of the other end both healed and with no scarring. Many have experienced and endorsed the concept of owning, acknowledging and verbalizing the desire or urge to use, though without acting upon it, as a means to deal with them. They have experienced the moving of the energy from an undercurrent through to full-blown desire, but have just sat through it, and by doing so have realized that they did not die and nor were they overwhelmed by anxiety or the doom that seemed so impending uh, just moments beforehand. An example uh, for me was when my wife quit smoking. She would often state, and that was many years ago, she would often state how much she would give for a smoke, but gradually the urges waned, her determination strengthened, and it is now only occasionally that the urge or the addictive voice will surface and of course uh, she has the wisdom now to know that this too shall pass. Dr. Ballantyne further states that disease is tapas thrust upon us when we have put it off endlessly. In any case it's a transmutational process of tapas that is the essence of in fact the healing experience whether it's the transformation and healing of a psychological disorder or the resolution of a physical illness. A magical confluence of polar opposites mixed together here to create the mystery of healing. The process hinges on your being fully in control, totally able to make a choice about how you deal with the crisis. At the same time, <coughs> excuse me, illness gives you the gift of helplessness. And I say the gift of helplessness, uh, meaning the overwhelming awareness that your way of being has, at least in some respects, failed. You have pushed to your limits and you have come up empty handed, that is. Now this creates a moment when you are receptive to a spontaneous response from a much deeper level of being. What one might call grace, in fact, uh, which is an inspired vision of the heretofore unimagined. Valentine states that it actually seems necessary to experience a certain sense of giving up, of surrender, in order to discover a totally new way of being and a new way of functioning. So for some, when we look at that, we realize that the only thing left to hold on to is actually giving up. Thanks very much.